Have you ever thought about which is actually a more reliable brand, Lexus or BMW? The question may seem like it's an easy one to answer, but it is actually a lot more complex than you would initially think. I've got a lot of great reasoning and I want to talk about some of the key priorities by both Lexus and BMW, which can lead to the end results here. But before we do that, I definitely have to share some key examples of some popular models and where those vehicles have actually failed. So let's get into that right now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. And so let's just get right into it and we might as well start with the Lexus brand. Right here we have the Lexus RX350. Very, very popular SUV, mid-size. You see lots of these on the road because they're relatively reliable. They're attractive, stylish, and if you want a luxury vehicle, Lexus always seems to be the vehicle to go with. But let me share a little something with you. These are brand new, so it's hard to tell what they'll be like in five or 10 years from now. But, but if you track back down through Repair Pal, you'll find RX350 vehicles from a couple of years ago have steering racks that needed replacement to the tune of about $1,500. Cracking dashboards also have been a known problem with some of these vehicles to the tune of about $1,300 to $1,500 to rectify. There's been water pump issues which lead to overheating. There's also been firmware issues on the navigation. Sometimes it doesn't make the right choices. There's been issues and glitches related to the sat nav system. And as well, reviewing the Consumers Affairs website, there's a whole host of other issues that individual people have commented on. For example, overheating, which eventually led to an engine that was blown, needed replacement, rear speakers not working. Another customer reported at 120,000 miles, a whole new engine was needed. And somebody commented uh, their vehicle was easily stolen because it doesn't have an adequate tracking system. You want the next one? How about the venerable Lexus GS460 right here? Absolutely great vehicles. A great argument could be made for the reliability of these vehicles. Flagship SUV, classic styling, isn't too bold, ultra luxurious, high quality. I mean, there's some great finishing. Look at the quality finishing down there. Stylish rims, chrome door handles, beautiful mirrors, and that outrageous Lexus style of grille. These vehicles are great, but according to consumers, they're not entirely flawless. Even a great vehicle as this has had some complaints. For example, one person complained that the navigation made some entirely oddball decisions sent them down a different path. Another person complained that the alternator went out on them almost immediately after taking possession of the vehicle. And there was even a complaint regarding the leather interior coming unraveled and actually bulging in different spots, turning into an utter mess. So as you can see, even the best of the best still have their issues from time to time. So let's talk about the next model that has a whole host of issues within the Lexus world. And it's the IS series. There's an IS 250, 300, IS 350. And as you get newer, they're finding less and less problems. But we'll talk about the 250 as it's the most problematic version of the IS series. One issue is the rear view mirror gets foggy and you can't see through it. Some cars are noted as having rear clicking noise and it often attributed to rear coil springs that need to be replaced. The GPS or the navigation system in this also goes awry. So it seems to be a common thread with a lot of Lexus vehicles and the system that they utilize. There's frequent engine codes related to misfires in the engine. There's also many issues related it to the transmission or the PCM module, the powertrain control module. And sometimes these transmissions have known to slip and essentially just fail altogether. So even though they're always a relatively safe bet, they aren't entirely without fault either, the IS series of Lexus. And we can't forget about the SC models here, very pretty vehicles, luxurious, but there were certain years with the digital display that would find themselves burning out and that would cost a huge chunk of change to get that rectified. Now, right back here, we have the GS series. Very popular upscale performance sedan. Unfortunately, they've finally discontinued the GS due to poor sales. That really is unfortunate because that's one of the vehicles that actually has even a slightly better than average reliability, even in the Lexus world. Did you know the GX 470 actually had a whole host of issues? For example, a clinking in the rear end upon stop, usually was a rear control arm or a drive shaft. Jamming sunroof was another issue as well. The navigation system was a problem in here, as well as seats that weren't in the right position, you'd get a code on that. And a P0441, which is essentially evaporation system fault. Loud vacuum sounds coming out from under the hood on a startup. And all kinds of engine codes associated with running lean. There was issues with that as well in the fuel system. And there were actually a pile of significant recalls. Huge recall regarding fuel pumps. How about the engine issues that had broken valve springs that could lead to engine failure as well engine issues that had porous materials in the cast also caused potential fire due to coolant or oil leaks but we're not here to hammer on Lexus because overall they create a very very reliable product 
But let's talk about some of the issues within the BMW world. For example, right here we have the BMW 750i and that has a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 called the N63. Now the later versions like you see in here are a little bit improved. There's more shielding with the turbos, but the problem with these engines, other than the fact that they have a heavy draw on the system electrically, water pumps, there's issues with cooling system, leaks, failures because of all the plastic lines within. There's also a problem with timing chains in these where they slack up, they break, and there could be an issue there. But within the V of the engine here, there's two turbos in these cars and they get hot and they cook. And some of the earlier N63 engines, they could roast the motors. You'd get premature oil consumption, heavy oil consumption. You'd have valve guide issues, valve guide seal problems. What do we have? A 230. This car here has the B48 engine. So that recently is considered a very reliable modular four cylinder turbo engine of two liter displacement. Now this car is vastly improved from the last outgoing N20 engine that had timing chain issues. Timing chains would slack because of the plastic they used on the, valve, on the timing chain guides that would slack up, the chain would get loose and it would skip a cog and the engine was boom. But this B48 is much better. It's a heftier, beefier engine, more robust, but unfortunately recently fresh off the press, there's an issue with a bearing within the engine that can let go and cause a catastrophic failure. Not a lot of cases, but it's showing up already. And here's an M240i. These have the B58 engine. That's a modular turbo, single turbo six cylinder engine. Makes huge power, very reliable. So far is taking well to modifications. And the latest version of this is pretty solid. But if you go back a couple of generations to the N54 engine, which was essentially BMW's first kick at turbocharging an engine, it had two turbos. Those cars were notorious. The N54 engine, had leaking injectors, it had high pressure fuel pump failures, it had coolant leaks from everywhere, water pump, thermostat, radiators, cooling lines. It also had the leaking oil filter housing gasket. How about leaks on the oil pan? How about leaks on the valve cover gaskets? Those engines were easily the worst engine that BMW created. Lots of problems and that was one of those things where naysayers considered a good example of why BMWs are not reliable. Unfortunately that engine created a lot of bad reputation for the brand. Now unfortunately BMW had a few problem engines along the way outside of those. How about the S85? That was their V10 F1 inspired engine. Came in the M5 and the M6 back in the mid 2000s. Great engine from a performance standpoint. It really checked all the boxes for fun and excitement. Unfortunately, had a propensity for burning off rod bearings. There was also throttle actuator issues and there was word that it had more computing power than NASA space shuttle. How about another one, the S55 engine. That's the outgoing M3 and M4 engine that had crank hub issues. A lot of it was even more prevalent in the dual clutch cars because of the shock when you shift the transmission, it's very hard on the drivetrain. So let's face it, BMW wasn't short on problems, but they had a lot of great engines. And as I say, the B58 is shaping up to be a pretty robust engine. The B48, other than that bearing issue, is also showing to be a lot better than the outgoing four cylinder engine too. So BMW also had a whole host of recalls. Recalls regarding the Takata airbags. I'm sure most of you have heard about that. How about recalls on the knock sensors on the diesel engines? And yes, they've also had recent recalls regarding their hybrid vehicles that utilizing the Samsung batteries that they could ignite because of a flaw in a material within the battery cell. So they both have their share of recalls. They both have their share of issues. So what in fact is the more reliable brand? Well, I promised you we would talk about priorities. BMW is based on a strong profit driver. And as a result, they use a lot extra plastic. How about injection molding? And how about 3D printing? are all great technologies that they're investing a lot of money in. BMW is also much, much more focused on the performance driving car. They're big on innovation and they're also big on style as you can tell as well. But there's also a strong focus on the environment and recycling. And they, did you realize that they use a lot of old recycled plastic in some of their new vehicles? They're huge on that. That's part of the cost saving initiative as well as the environmental improvements that they can make as well. But Lexus priorities are a little bit different. They're more based on quality. For example, making sure that they have the quality control and all of the right checks are done before the vehicle hits the road. For example, they do dry turns on the engine in the factory before they even put fluids to it, and then they do a short run around the block. Consistency is another factor for Lexus. They don't change their models a whole lot. They don't change their drivetrains a lot. And when they make a change, it's been well vetted. There is also increased pride in manufacturing. They have a heightened sense of pride so that they don't get recalls. They don't get people coming back and unhappy customers. The intent is to make a quality product that people love.
Europe. So at the end of the day, with all the research I did with Repair Pell, Consumer Affairs, and the whole host of other sources that I investigated, it's pretty clear to me that BMW drivers value performance, innovation, style. I mean, with cars like the M2 competition, M5 competition, they have no direct competition. But on the other hand, Lexus values consistency, if not somewhat ho-hum design, but they do value pride of construction. And as a result, if you want the most reliable vehicle, Lexus is likely your game because there's a ratio of, of at least one Lexus failure to every five to 10 BMWs. And so I hope that makes it much more clear. With all of that said, I know you wanna find out more about BMW if you've been shopping. Be sure to click on that link and find out about the worst engine in BMW history. You're gonna love it. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then, bye-bye.